Hey everybody, John from The Lucky Needle here, and today I just wanted to say congratulations on purchasing your NC6 sewing machine. Um, I'm sure you guys are super excited to get this delivered to your house so you can start using it. And because of that, today I just wanted to film a little video kind of showing you guys how to set up your machine, what you're gonna need to do when it arrives to, so that you can get started using it right away. So the first thing is this thing's going to come all wrapped up and all packaged up and you're just going to unwrap it, get it off the pallet, get everything opened and you're going to have this big box and you're going to have this table here. So what we're going to have to do is actually install the head of the machine onto this table. I'm going to show you how to do this right now. The head of the machine is going to be inside this box here and then there's also going to be another small box that's filled with all the random accessories and little tools that are included with this machine. So let's get started with that. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to install the head on the sewing machine. So the head of the sewing machine is going to be inside this big styrofoam box. It's pretty heavy so this step it's a, it can be a good idea to have two people to help you because I'd say this machine weighs about 80 pounds so it's quite a bit of weight to lift by yourself. I'm young and dumb so I'm gonna do it right now by myself but uh, just to warn you guys it is pretty heavy. Okay so once you're ready to install the head onto the table what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this guy up you can see we have our machine in here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of here so that I can get ready to lift it up and put it on the machine. Um, again, like I said, this is pretty heavy, so just make sure you're being careful. Alright, so I'm going to take this piece of wood out of here so that I can set it down, set this machine down flat on this table, and then I'm not going to scratch my new, brand new table or anything. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is look through your, your box that comes with all of the accessories and tools and bobbins and all the other parts that are, you know, for your machine here. And what you're going to want to find is you're going to want to get these little hinges. And these hinges are what actually hold the machine into the table here and allow you to pivot it up so that you can service the underneath of the machine when you're doing oiling or any other thing like that. So these, these hinges are going to go right here in these holes on the back side of your machine. And then all we have to do is lift this up and set it right down in here. So sometimes these feet try to get a little crooked on you and then you'll have to reach back there and get them straight. But once you have that in there, the, next, the other thing what you're going to want to do is just move this uh, knee lift a little bit because otherwise it's going to hit on the machine here. So you just want to move it like that just a little bit and then you can set it down into the table. So there, that's pretty easy to get this in there. It's a little bit difficult because it's so heavy. Now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to put the belt because we have to install the belt so that it connects to the motor and the machine can actually move. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is you're going to want to locate first the belt for your machine. It's going to be inside that box with all the other parts. And then you're also going to want to locate this little knob thing right here. And what this does is it goes right here in the table. You just push it down and basically what it is is it's like a little stand for you to rest 
the head on when you lean it back. Because if you didn't have this here, it would fall all the way down, it would come off, and it would be kind of a mess. So make sure you put that in first. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install this belt. So the belt first is going to go around the pulley on the head here. And once you get that, then you're going to come around and you're going to tilt this machine back and you're going to loop it around the belt on the motor just like that. Let it down. Now, NC Carpet always runs and checks their machines before they send them to you. So you shouldn't have to adjust the belt tension on this, but you might. It, it always depends and plus, you know, as your machine gets older or maybe you have to put a new motor or something on it, you need to adjust the belt tension because, you know, after a lot of use, sometimes these get a little stretched and worn out and you have to add belt tension. So for the belt tension, it's all adjusted by this little screw, this, uh, these two bolts right here, these two nuts, and you loosen them up and basically you can pull more tension onto the belt. Now, I what I typically do is just, I loosen it up and I put about just a, a slight amount of tension more than just the motor resting on the belt itself. And then I lock it in place and that should be enough. Um, basically what you want is enough tension to where the machine will run and sew through heavy material but the belt won't slip. Um, and the reason why you don't want to put a ton of tension on this, like say maybe you're used to doing uh, belts on cars or something like that, you put quite a bit of tension. You don't want to put that much tension on these. And the reason for that is because when you put a lot of tension on the belt and the motor, it's going to cause the motor to wear out prematurely because you're putting all that pressure on the bearings and everything inside the motor. So it's better to go a little bit less than you think and then if it starts slipping, then you can add a little more. All right, so now that we got this belt installed, if you're following along in the manual, the, one of the things that they're gonna want you to do is they're gonna want you to install these belt covers that go over the belt and kind of protect anything from getting caught inside it. There's one on top here, and then there's one that goes down on the bottom. Um, so this is what the manufacturer suggests. It's mostly them covering their asses. Um, in my, what I normally do is I never run these on my machine. The reason is, is because it makes it really difficult to service the belt. Um, it gets in the, to take the belt off, you have to take these covers off and it just, it, it, it's more of an annoyance to me. Now, I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just telling you what I personally do. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you want to take the risk of not running these. But if you decide to not install these on your machine, it's, it's important to keep aware to not, like if you have long hair, your hair can get caught in here. So don't make sure you have your hair tied up and it doesn't get caught inside this belt. Make sure you don't obviously stick your fingers or anything inside there. Um, but other than that, you'll be pretty safe. So if you want to install these, just read your manual and it'll show you how to do it. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it on this machine because I personally make the decision not to run these. Um, so after you do that, the next thing that we're going to move on to is installing your thread stand. And the reason this wasn't already set up for you from the factory is because it sticks up way high and it, it would take up a lot more room shipping it. So um, it's really easy. You just have a one nut here on the bottom and some washers and a little rubber rubber spacer. So what you're going to do is just take this nut off. And then you're going to take the one washer and the rubber, the rubber guy is going to stay on top here. And then you're just going to slide it through this hole just like that. 
and then you're going to put the the nut back on the bottom here and if you want you can tighten this up with a wrench but i usually just crank this down by hand and the reason that i do that is because i like to be able to move this around whenever i want and if you crank it down with a wrench this is going to be locked in place but it's nice to be able to move this guy around and what this guy does is it holds all our thread for us or not all of it but at least two spools so you put your thread right here and then you run it through these holes and it goes down to your machine and it just it it makes a really nice um, unobstructed path to your sewing machine because if you just had your thread down here and it was going to the sewing machine it might get caught in things it, it might it's not going to unravel the way it should so that's what we're going to do here um, so this thread that i have here this is size 92 bonded polyester and if any of you follow me from before you'll know that i always recommend 99 percent of the time using bonded polyester there are a few other applications you might come across that would require a different type of thread, but for the most part, this is gonna work for you all the time. So size 92, bonded polyester. The two brands that I recommend you guys using is Coats, that's what this brand is here. This is Coats Bonded Polyester, or a company called Amon, and there's two brands of thread that Amon makes that I recommend for automotive and marine use. And one is called Serafil and the other one is called Sarabond. Those are the two threads I recommend everybody use. Those two companies are the best that I've found and they cause the least amount of issues for you while you're sewing. They're a little bit more expensive than some of the budget brands that you'll see out there. But when it comes to thread, that is not an area you wanna skip out on. So just spend a little bit of extra money and get the good stuff because it's gonna save you a lot of headaches in the future. Okay, so now that you got your machine set up this far, it's pretty much ready to use. You, if you want, you guys can go ahead and start sewing on it, thread the machine, and start having fun with it. But before we do that, I wanna show you guys a couple of more adjustments on this machine that will make this more comfortable for you to use and kind of tailor it to your body size and what you like and what's comfortable for you. So the first thing I wanna talk about is setting your table height. Now, there's basically, you want to set your table height to the size of the layout table that you're gonna be using to work on, to lay your fabric out, to cut out all your patterns and everything. So. If you guys are new and you don't already have a table size, this is perfect because you won't make the same mistake that I did. Um, I built my table just uh, without thinking about how high that I wanted it. And I noticed now after working on it for a few years that I have to lean over too far and it hurts my back. And the reason why I built the table that size was because I just matched it to wherever my machine was sitting at at the time not realizing that you can adjust the height of the machine. So um, what I recommend doing if you don't already have a table built is raising up the table of your machine to a comfortable working height for you, whatever size person you are and tailoring that to yourself. So for me, I feel like the best height working table is kind of about waist level to where I can work with my hands, I don't have to be bent over all day doing stuff like this because it will eventually start to wear on your back and it does end up not being so comfortable. So that's what I recommend. So setting this table to the height that's comfortable for you to work with while standing up because you can always get a chair that's a little bit higher or taller for your sewing machine when you're sitting there, but it's a little bit more difficult to completely build another table uh, that will be the size that you need it. So the way that you go about setting the height of the table is the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to loosen up this uh, the pedal here in the linkage because this linkage 
is fixed. So if you lift up the table, it's going to either break something or it's not going or the 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 pedal travel is not going to be where it needs to be. So all of the tools you need to make any adjustments on this machine actually come with it. So this is one of the wrenches here that come with the machine. It's really easy for this. All you're going to do is loosen this guy up and it has this kind of clamp here with the bolt. So we can just leave that kind of loose right now. And now I'm not going to show you how to do this because it's pretty easy to understand, but there's four bolts on the machine, one on each part of the leg. Now you're just going to loosen these up and this is going to allow the table to slide up and down. So there's a slot in here that is about this big. And so you, for each one of these holes, you have about that much adjustment. If you can't get it high enough or low enough, you can move all these bolts to another hole and then it'll give you a little bit more adjustment to get it where you want it to be. So this actually is a step that's a lot easier to do with two people um, because it's kind of awkward and when you loosen everything up, one side wants to fall down and, and so it's a lot easier if you have somebody helping you hold the other side while you raise it up to the level that you want. Um, and you're also going to want to make sure that you take a tape measure and you measure to the ground to make sure that all four corners are relatively the same height. Otherwise, you're going to have an issue with your table kind of rocking on flat ground and it's, it's going to be a little annoying. So make sure you check that with a tape measure. Spend the extra time to get it kind of tuned up exactly all the right, right height. And then once you do that, what you're going to have to do is reset this 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 pedal here i i typically just call it the throttle pedal it's technically called the threadle um, but if you hear me refer to it as the pedal that's what i'm talking about so you're going to want to put this little clamp back in here and you're going to get these two bars through both the holes here. And now what you're gonna wanna do is you don't want to set this where the, the pedal is all the way in the down and off position. You're gonna wanna set it a little bit past. And the reason for that is because on these motors there's a brake. So you have the down, when you pull it down, that's gonna make the motor move. But when you push it up, it's gonna activate the brake on the machine, which is really not handy to have because it allows you to stop the machine quicker. And you can also hold the brake while you're working on things so that nothing in the machine will move. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just going to set this so that you still have a little bit of, of backwards travel to apply the brake and enough travel to completely, completely go full throttle on this motor. So all we're gonna do is I'm just going to go all the way backwards and then I'm just gonna bring it up maybe a half inch or so and then we're gonna tighten this back down. There, and then that's all there is to it. You still have enough room to apply the brake, and this is allowing the throttle to go all the way down on the motor. All right, so after you get your table height all set up to exactly where you want it and where it's comfortable for you, the next thing that you can adjust, I typically set these one time. Usually they're already in the right position when they come from when they come from the place that you buy them. But uh, you can actually move the position of this throttle pedal here. Um, you can see there's all these adjustment holes. You can move it anywhere you want. If you do end up moving this, you might have to readjust the setting on, on the linkage here. 
but that's like I showed you, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so I already have this one set up where I want it. I actually didn't touch it when it came from NC Carpet. So it's really good right now, but what you wanna kind of be, what you want to look for is that you want where you're gonna be sewing normally, which is like your body right in front of the needle. You want your foot to easily be on the pedal. And I typically like to have the pedal offset to the left side. And the reason for that is quite a few times when you're sewing up a really big bulky piece of material, you're going to have to move over to the side and you have to feed it through like this. And it's a lot nicer to make sure that you have still some pedal to move your foot over if you have to adjust the position of your body while you're sewing. Um, it's almost never a scenario where you need to be farther over this way. That just doesn't really happen because of the neck of the machine and the way you sew pieces up. Um, so that's a pretty easy adjustment. There's just four screws on here. You can move it to wherever you want and then you're going to want to reset your throttle linkage and you'll be good to go. Alright, so the next thing we're going to adjust to make this more comfortable for us to use is we're gonna adjust this knee lift here. And what this does is it allows you to lift up the foot by just using your knee. If you, you can see how I'm pushing sideways on my knee and the foot's coming up. This way you don't have to always do it with your hand. This is a really nice feature and it makes it super easy to make adjustments while you're sewing, to pull your fabric out, cut the thread. It's, it's a really, really nice feature. But these typically, don't don't come set up to where it fits you so there's multiple adjustments on here you have uh, this bolt here that will adjust the angle that this this uh, knee lift sits at you have this bolt here that can move it forward closer to your knee or farther away from your knee and then you have this one here that can move the pad up and down that your knee rests on. So what you're gonna wanna do is kinda set this at a position where you can still lift the, the foot up all the way as high as it'll go, but you also don't want it to be like touching on your knee while you're, you're sewing and doing everything. So you kinda want it a little bit out of the way and you wanna make sure that this pad hits right on your knee in a comfortable spot so that you can use it properly. So that's a pretty easy adjustment to make. Um, there's a couple of screws to make everything happen, but once you get it set up, I think you'll really like it. Um, so now what we can move on to is we're gonna talk about some needles here and how to install these. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about needles that you're gonna be using on your machine. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out is that every new machine that you buy is gonna come with this guard right here. And this guard is technically to prevent your finger from getting anywhere close to the needle. Um, again, this is one of those things from the factory where they're covering their ass, like I told you before. Um, now, I am not telling you to not run this, so don't blame me if you accidentally sew your finger up, but most people do not run this. They take it off. I don't run them. I take the risk personally myself because it's a lot easier to use this machine. It's a lot easier to see where you're sewing on your piece of fabric and all of that. So it's up to you whether or not you want to remove this. I'm going to show you how to take it off. But again, don't blame me if you hurt yourself. So all you're going to need to do is just remove this one screw right here where the presser foot is. And you can take that guy right off just like that. And then just reinstall that screw so that this foot will stay in place.
and then you're good. So now let's talk a little bit about these needles. One of the things that I want to bring up, if you purchase this NC6 sewing machine, it's gonna come with a label on top of the machine that says you should use needle system 123 by 24. Um, and you can do that and you can purchase those needles from NC Carpet, but I just wanna let you know that the 123 by 24 needle system is the exact same needle as 135 by 17, which is the most common type of needle that you'll see on most machines. So I recommend using those needles on this machine because it has the most options and sizes in needle point types and it's a lot better to use. So I suggest using that. Um, if you don't really know much about needle systems and which size needle to use for your sewing machine, make sure you go onto our YouTube channel and we have a video on there explaining to you all about needles, the different sizes and what you should choose. But just to make things super simple for you, the different size needles that I recommend you guys starting out with is either an 18 or 19 size needle and then it's also nice to have size 20 and size 22 and those are all going to vary depending on how thick or strong of a material you're using um, basically you want to make sure that your needle is strong enough to sew through the material but you want to make the smallest hole possible so make sure you check out that video about needles on our youtube channel because it will really clear a lot of that up for you so the other thing I want to talk about is how to actually install these needles. Um, there's a little screw right here that locks your needle in place. And when you want to change this or install a new one, you're going to loosen these up. And your needle is going to slide right out. Um, now on all sewing machine needles, there is a groove on the side of the needle here and what this groove is for is to allow the thread to slip inside this groove while it's punching through the fabric because if it didn't have that there it would break the thread because of the tension and the pressure while it's pushing through the fabric so on these machines you want to position this groove to the left side of the machine so you want it facing out this way and the reason for that is because the needle has this little area for the hook which is a little bit more advanced we don't really need to talk about that right now but it's it's important for the the groove of the needle to be facing the left side of the machine so when you slide that guy back in there you're gonna want to make sure that the needles all the way pushed to the top and then I like to stick my fingernail in there and you can kind of twist it to, to the position so that it's facing out to the left. And then once you do that, you can just tighten this screw up. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so now let's talk about oiling your machine. Um, when you first get your machine, you're going to want to make sure that you oil it because you don't know how long it's been sitting and when the last time it was oiled. Um, it probably got oiled at the NC Carpet Warehouse when they first set up the machine, but it's been a while since, since they did that, so you're going to want to make sure you do it yourself. Um, so the first thing what you're going to do is your machine's going to come with uh, this nice little oiling bottle so oil dripper for you to go through and oil all the little spots on your machine that need to get oiled. Now the, the manual that comes with your machine is a little bit vague on this so I'm gonna go a little bit more in detail to show you exactly what you need to do. Um, the first thing that I want to point out is that there's just a little hole here on the top of the machine that says oil um, and in the manual it tells you to put a couple drops in there but I feel like it needs to be quite a bit more and the reason for that is if you open this up there's this little reservoir in here and it's got this big piece of like a, it's like a sponge that absorbs the oil and allows these yarns to take the oil wick the oil down to certain points in the machine 
that keep it lubricated. So this one, I like to always make sure that this sponge is completely saturated. So add actually quite a bit of oil in here. Um, something like that. You can see there's a little bath down here, so it's not gonna really matter if you put too much in here, but it will matter after a while if you don't put enough. So once you do that, then you can just close this guy up and that should be good for quite a while. And then the next things you wanna oil is you'll notice that there's these little red dots all around the machine. There's some on the back side, there's some on the top, there's some all over. And you're just gonna to wanna to go in and put one to two drops in each one of those little holes that you can see all around the machine. And this is going to help preserve the life of your machine. It's gonna keep it running smoothly. Um, this is something you really want to make sure that you keep up on. So um, typically I oil my machine before I start to use it every day. Um, and then I definitely oil it before I put it away if, if I'm not gonna use it for a while. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll let it go a day or two if I'm using it for a project and I'm using it for you know, a week straight or two weeks straight. I like to oil it like every one to three days um, is a good kind of interval to make sure that you follow. Um, so the, some of the other areas on this machine that you're gonna want to make sure that you lube is Pretty much every moving area on the sewing machine that you can reach, you're gonna wanna put just one or two drops of oil. You don't need to put a ton, because the problem is if you put a lot of oil on this machine in any one spot, is it's gonna drip down, it's all gonna end up dripping down onto the feet or somewhere and it might get on your fabric and you don't want it to stain your fabric. So just be careful not to over oil it, but make sure you do oil it on a regular basis. Um, another area you're gonna to wanna to do is open up this, this little side panel here. There's this little thumb screw that you can just unscrew by hand. And then what I like to do is just move the machine back and forth to see where all the moving parts are um, and then just put a little couple of drops on all the moving parts. Anywhere you can see a little piece of yarn sticking out like this, you're gonna wanna put a couple drops on those because that, that's again another, another little piece that's gonna wick oil somewhere down into the machine to also lube a part that you probably can't reach with this. So once you get done with everything here in the access plate, then you're gonna to wanna to go into the bottom of the machine and lube that up. So all we're gonna do is just push this machine back like that. It's gonna stay there for us. And then again, I'm gonna turn the hand wheel and we'll be able to see all the moving parts inside here. And you just wanna go through, put a couple drops on everything that you see moving and this will really make a massive difference on the life of your machine and how long this lasts. So make sure you keep up on that. Whenever you run out of sewing machine oil, you can purchase this from NC Carpet or really any generic sewing machine oil will work fine for you. Um, you can usually buy a bottle of sewing machine oil from your local upholstery supplier or online or, or wherever works for you. So it's more important to make sure that you oil your machine regularly than make sure you have the exact oil that the manufacturer recommends. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to wind your bobbins. Um, so I go in pretty into depth in this on the apprentice course. So if you have that, make sure you watch that. So on here, I'm just gonna kinda of run through this really quick and not spend a ton of time on it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it yourself and just how to get it going pretty quickly. Um, another point I wanna bring up is that normally, I most of the time use these pre-wound bobbins. Um, it saves you a ton of time, it costs you a little bit more money, but the time that you save, I feel it's well worth it. The only time I really ever, I really ever wind my own bobbins is if 
I'm using some sort of color other than black, white, or brown, um, and they don't sell the pre-wine bobbins in that color. So we'll do that now. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna slide our bobbin onto the bobbin winder right here. Now these bobbin winders should come up already set up from NC working so that all you need to do is just put your thread through and then run it. But uh, one of the things that sometimes you have to make an adjustment on is if this bobbin doesn't sit on here nice and tight, it's gonna spin and not wind the bobbin tightly. So sometimes what you have to do is take a little screwdriver and put it in this little groove here and bend that open to make this fit just a little bit tighter. But for right now, this is good. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your thread and you're gonna put it through the eye of the bobbin winder right here. And then you're gonna go through these two spring plates. And what that's gonna do is put tension on this bobbin so that it makes sure that it winds it nice and tightly. Um, you can adjust this. You want a fair amount of tension and you'll kind of understand what's the right amount of tension as you use these. A pretty good starting point is to make sure that this, this nut here is flush with the post. If you go too tight, it's gonna get really hard for the bobbin to wind. If you go too loose, you're gonna have issues with thread tension inconsistencies. So I suggest starting right about where this is flush. That's usually a pretty good starting point and uh, it usually works for me. So what you're gonna wanna do after that is you wanna take the thread and you're gonna put it through one of these holes on your bobbin you want to make sure that the thread is going out this direction because if you put it through one of the holes on this side, this little tail here is going to get all caught up inside this shaft and it's not going to work. So once you do that, then you're going to push this little lever forward just like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to push this wheel into the belt of the machine here. And when we press the pedal, it's going to spin this and it's going to wind the bobbin thread or wind the thread onto this bobbin. Um, so one of the things, other things you want to make sure you do is I like to have my foot locked up in, in the lifted position because otherwise it's just banging against the table and it's not really good for your machine. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you don't have any thread going through the eye of your needle because if you do, then it's gonna get caught up down here in the bottom of the machine. So now all we need to do is just press the pedal and it's going to wind this for us. Once you get a little bit of thread on the bobbin and everything's locked in place, you can go ahead and cut off this tail and then finish up winding the bobbin. Now one of the things that you want to look for when you're winding your bobbins and setting up your bobbin winder is that it's evenly loading the bobbin. If you have a lot of the thread onto one side of the bobbin, then you're going to have to make an adjustment. But like I said, NC sets this up for you before they ship the machine, so it should be okay. But if you do run into this problem, the way that you fix that issue is there's a little screw right here and you just adjust side to side how the thread is feeding into the bobbin here and that will balance out the thread evenly winding onto the bobbin. Okay, so one of the things that you might need to adjust is this stop here. So this stop pops the, once, once the thread touches this little finger, it pops it off and stops the bobbin from winding. 
Um, so right here you can see we can fit quite a bit more thread on this bobbin. So the way you adjust this is just turn this screw tighter and it moves this finger down to allow more thread on the bobbin. And what you want is you want these bobbins about 80, 90% full. You don't want them all the way full to the top or, or to the edge of this bobbin. And the reason for that is if it's too full, it's gonna bind up inside the bobbin case and not be able to spin very well. So now that we got that readjusted, let's see what it looks like now. All right, so then once it pops back out like this, then you know it's done. So you can slide this off and just cut this loose. And now we're ready to install this in, mach in the machine. So the next step that I'm gonna show you guys is how to actually thread this machine. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you want, you can just check out the schematic in the manual and it will show you how to thread this, but I'm just gonna show you really quick how to do it. All right, so now it's time to thread the machine. Um, I suggest making sure that you look at the diagram in your manual so that you can really see exactly how this is supposed to go. But hopefully this video will help you guys uh, understand any of the misunderstandings that you might get when looking at the picture. So we're gonna take our thread, it's gonna go through the, the, the thread holder, or the thread stand, and then you're gonna bring it down here to this little post, and you're gonna come through the back side, stick the thread through like that, and then we're gonna wrap it around and come right through this hole right here. Now, it might seem kind of silly, all these different ways that it routes and everything, but it's really important that you follow the instructions on how the thread is actually threaded through the machine because it does make a difference and it can cause you extra problems while you're sewing. Um, so once we go through that little post there, we're gonna come through this first hole straight in. We're gonna wrap it around and we're gonna skip this second hole and go straight to the third hole right here. So you want to make sure that it has a nice little twist just like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come through these tension discs here. So you want to really, really want to make sure that you get it in the middle of these two discs because if you get it on the back side, it's really easy not to notice and then you won't have any tension on your thread while you're sewing, which is really important. So we're gonna bring that down, and then through this little spring here, we're gonna come through these two silver plates, and you again wanna make sure that you go right through the middle of these. And now, what we're gonna do, this is kind of a little tricky part here, is we're gonna take the end of our thread, and we're gonna put it you can see there's this little hook on the back side of this plate here and you're going to want to make sure the thread goes from the back side of that hook and then we're going to want to hook it around that hook and pull it tight and then we're going to want to come through this little spring just like that And that's what's gonna, this is gonna help, this is called the take up spring. And what this does is it helps as the needle's going up and down, it helps take up any slack in the thread. So it's really important that it goes up over that little hook on the backside there and then down and around this spring so that it can actually work properly. If you just go, if you don't go around that hook on the back there and just go through this spring, it's not gonna do anything and it's not, going to do, it's not gonna sew properly. So now we need to go through this little hoop right here and all you need to do is just push it through that backside right there and then you're gonna wanna go through the take up lever. There's a little eye right here in this lever. You're gonna go through that and then you're gonna bring it back through this other hoop right here you're gonna bring it through this hoop right here. 
And then you're also going to bring it through this little hoop right here with this sponge. And this is a good point to talk about right now. This little sponge actually helps lubricate your thread. So when you're oiling your machine, you're also going to want to put some oil on this little sponge here. And what that's going to do is just help your thread feed smoothly through your project. It's going to help keep it cool so that it doesn't break if you're sewing extremely fast. Um, and it's, it's just important to remember that. So after you get through there, you're going to come through this little hoop right here. And then you're going to bring, make sure to bring your needle to the upright position so you can see the eye clearly. And then you're going to thread the, the thread through the needle from, from the left side to the right side so that because this is this will make sure that the thread goes into that little groove that we talked about earlier because if you thread it from the other side it's going to wrap around the needle and it's not going to go inside that groove All right, so once you get your machine threaded just like that, the next thing we need to do is install the bobbin. So the bobbin case looks like this, and it's, it gets installed down here in the bottom of the machine. Um, so for this example, I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the machine upright, but once you get used to this, you don't have to push the machine up. You can just you can just open up this little access plate and look down inside there. So once you pull this out, it has this little lever and that's what unlocks it from the machine and you can take it out. Um, you're going to take your bobbin and you're going to run the thread through this little slot right here. We'll slide the bobbin in and then we're going to put it through that little slot and then you're going to want to make sure it goes under this spring. Now this spring is what controls the tension on the bobbin and we'll get to that later on why that's important. So when you install your bobbin, what you're going to want to do is hold, hold this face towards you and pull on it a little bit and you want this to be spinning clockwise. If if you have it installed the wrong direction, it's going to, like if you have it twisted around like this, it's going to pull the bobbin the wrong direction. And the reason you want to avoid that is because it doesn't apply consistent tension the way it's supposed to. So you always want to make sure that it's spinning clockwise when you install this. just like that. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of this extra thread here that we pulled out while I was showing you guys how to install that. And then what you're going to do is install this back into the machine and you're going to want to hold open this lever like this. I'm going to tilt the machine back so you guys can see this a little bit easier. But all it does is it just goes right into this little thing, this little bobbin case right here. And you let go of that lever and it's good. Um, sometimes you might have to move the hand wheel a little bit because sometimes this little bar will get in the way or maybe the needle, if the needle's down, you can't get the bobbin case in. So make sure your needle's all the way up and then that'll slide right in there and lock in place. So then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the bobbin thread up to the top of the machine. And all you're going to do is just roll the hand wheel over by hand in the machine. It's going to pick up this thread 
all by itself. You can see here how it pulled it through and then just grab it with your fingers and now you're ready to sew. All right, so now that we're ready to start sewing and kind of practicing and getting used to our machine here, I wanna show you one of the features that's my favorite about this machine. And that is this servo motor down here that you can adjust to set the speed so that it's a lot easier for you to control. Um, what I suggest that you start out at is just putting it on the first step, which on this motor is 350. Not really sure what those numbers mean, it just has to do with the speed. Typically what I'm doing when I'm sewing, if I'm sewing anything really detailed, I stick with this first little setting right here. And then if I'm doing some stuff where I want, I need to sew a little bit faster, but I'm not concerned about it being, you know, uh, perfectly accurate, then I'll bump it up a notch or two. And this is gonna really speed up the machine and allow you to sew a lot faster. But for the start, I just recommend you guys starting on the first setting. It'll help you get used to the machine. It'll be easier for you to control and all of that. All right, now that you've got your machine set up to this point, now what we can do is start having some fun and sewing on some scrap piece of fabric so you guys can get used to using your machine. So I just suggest getting some scraps and put it in here and start going. Make sure your foot's down and just press the throttle and it'll start sewing. You can see how smooth this machine sews. It's really nice. Um, it's nice and slow and controllable. You can really go very slow if you want. Um, the other thing that you'll wanna practice using is you wanna use this reverse lever. That's what does your lock stitch. That's what allows you to sew in reverse. Um, any of those things I cover in the apprentice course, so make sure you watch that. So when you're, after you get used to sewing, you're going to want to see if there's any like issues or the, you want to make sure the machine's sewing properly. If there's any like major issues that you can't figure out the problem for, then you're going to want to reach out to NC and they have a really helpful customer support and they will help you figure out what is going on with the problem that you're having. So there's a few more settings after you get used to sewing that I want you to know how to do on this machine. So I'm just gonna cut this loose here. And the first thing after you're sewing, the, so getting practicing sewing, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to set your thread tension to the correct uh, the correct tension. So you have your, right here you have your top thread tension. So you turn this screw and this tightens these springs right here, which, which adds tension to the top thread. And then you have your, your bobbin that I showed you earlier, where you can tighten that screw on the bobbin spring and that will allow, that will tighten up the tension on the bottom. Um, so, Basically what you want to do is to get the, the knot of your machine to meet. So the top and the bottom thread, they meet like this. And you want that point to meet right in the middle of the, of the seam that you're sewing. So you can adjust that by either tightening or loosening the top thread and tightening and loosening the bottom, the bottom bobbin thread. Um, now if, I'm just going to kind of go through this really quickly, but if you want a more in-depth instructions on setting your thread tension, make sure you check out our YouTube video because we have a really good video on that, on exactly how to set your thread tension and where you want it to be. But basically, like I said, you want it to meet in the middle. And then the other thing that you want to make sure is that both of them aren't too tight or too loose together because you can still get the thread to meet in the middle and your thread tension can either be super loose and if it's really loose when you pull it apart you'll see like some gaps and your your seam won't be very tight and if it's too tight what's going to happen is you're going to get bunching and when you like lay your seam down flat it's going to look kind of wrinkly because the thread both the bottom and the top thread are so tight that they're fighting the fabric to get back 
to you know a relaxed position. Um, but yeah, th that's the basics on that. And then the next thing that you're going to want to know is this little knob here. This adjusts the stitch length. So the stitch length is the distance between each hole that the machine makes on your fabric. This is really nice how we have a dial right here. Some other machines, the older machines, it's a little bit more difficult to adjust this. There's a little button you have to push and then you have to turn the hand wheel. And this just makes it super easy. You can do it right in the middle of sewing. You can change this and you can see how much bigger the, uh, the stitch length gets. You can turn it down and it'll get a lot smaller. Typically, most of my seams, all of my base seams that I sew, they're gonna be around an eighth of an inch is what I want the stitch length to be. So that's right here. On this machine, it's right around like four and a half and five is a pretty good spot for most of your seams. The only time that you're gonna want to adjust it bigger is if you want a different look for top stitches. But other than that, stick around eighth of an inch for your seam, your stitch length, and you'll be good. All right, so after you've had some fun practicing with your sewing machine and getting sewing around, um, there's just a few more things that I wanna to talk to you about. Uh, sometimes these machines, they come with these little lights or you can buy these yourself online. Um, it's really nice, this machine. It has on the back side here a little plug that you can plug this into so that every time you turn your machine on and off, the, uh, the light will also turn off with this machine. So that's kind of a cool feature. And also that makes it so that you don't have to run another power just to your light. Um, and then this, usually these lights are magnetic so you can just stick them anywhere you want on your machine so that it helps light up your work area wherever you want. Um, sometimes people will try to like tie these wires up nice and tidy. I typically just leave them kind of hanging out of the way so that I can move this light anywhere that I want it to that will help me when I'm sewing. So uh, do whatever works for you on that, but these lights are really helpful and I suggest having one. Another accessory that I, or a couple other accessories that I want to talk to you guys about are sewing machine feet types. So this machine comes from the factory with a stock flat foot type, which is the most common foot that you're gonna use the most often and you're gonna need all the time. And it's more than enough to get you guys started and working on your projects and practicing sewing. So don't worry about running out right away to buy all these other feet you can accumulate those as you do certain projects. I just want to talk to you about what feet you might need. Um, so these feet, they're actually, they're, they're flat on the bottom and they're smooth on the bottom. Sometimes you'll see flat feet that come with like serrated edges and that helps give it more grip. But the only time you're gonna wanna use that is if you, you're sewing on maybe like canvas or something really slippery. If you use that, the serrated edge feet on fabric that's, that's soft like vinyl and leather, it's going to leave marks in it and it's not going to look good. So I almost 100% of the time am always using this style of flat feet with the smooth bottom. Now the other two types of feet that you're gonna to wanna to consider getting. One is welt feet, and welt feet are basically feet for your sewing machine that have a, a concaved section for welt to feed evenly through your machine so that it's really easy for you to sew welted seams. Because without those, it's almost impossible to make a good seam for if you're doing a welted seam, which is pretty common on cars and boats these days, so I'm sure you guys will be doing them. So the two sizes that I recommend you getting to start out with are going to be 3 16 welt feet and quarter inch welt feet. And all that is dictating is the size of the channel that's in the feet. So depending on the thickness of your material and the thickness of the welt cord that you're using, you can adjust accordingly. Um, I also have 1 8 inch welt feet for 
smaller welt cord for really you know tight nice looking welt seams but it just depends on what you're using the most common feet that you're going to need is, again is 3 16 and, and one quarter the other set of feet that you might want to think about getting are called zipper feet and basically what those are is they're a set of feet with one side of it missing so that you can sew up close to a zipper now I typically, if you watch the, the Lucky Needle upholstery courses, I normally sew my zippers on without zipper feet because it's easier for me. The reason I have zipper feet is for sewing things like wind lace and things like that, which you'll also see in the courses. But I just want to bring it up to you. It's, a, it's an important uh, foot to have for your machine if you're going to be doing stuff like that. And uh, just keep that in mind. So the, the last question that you might have talking about feet is where where do you buy these feet uh, for your machine so there's a couple different places you can purchase them directly from NC carpet I personally buy my feet from either Amazon or from eBay now we're lucky with this machine because it uses the most common type of foot for the vast majority of walking foot sewing machines that you'll see out there. Same like with the needle, so that's really nice. Um, so you're gonna wanna search for these on either eBay or Amazon. And the problem is, is when you're searching for these, what you might run into is that none of the feet on there say they're meant for the NC6. And the reason for that is because the, this is a newer newer machine made it's made by Seiko so it's a really good machine but the NC6 isn't really something that they list uh, and what you're going to want to look for is any feet that fit an old singer or an old Juki like a Juki uh, 562 563 you can, you'll be able to tell by the look of them that they're the right feet so if you if you see any feet on Amazon or or eBay that are meant for those older machines it's going to be the right one and you don't necessarily want to buy the cheapest ones you can find but you don't need to buy the most expensive ones um, again I find that the best prices to buy those are on those two websites so that's what I suggest you guys do so all right, now that we're all done, you know how to use this machine. I really hope you guys get out there and start practicing and enjoy this machine because it is really one of the best machines out there that you can buy and I know you will love it. It's really easy to learn on. Um, and I hope you guys will actually send us some pictures of the projects that you complete as you're using this machine. So I hope this video helps and I'll see you guys later. All right, if you like that video and you want to see another one, make sure you click to your right here. And don't forget about all the courses we have available at the Lucky Needle. Click here in the corner to get more information. And don't forget to subscribe right here. Mm -hmm.